Hi everyone, I hope you're all well. So I have talked about feminist and feminism a lot on this channel, on my TV, and my writing. It's always been a very large chunk of my commentary, specifically third and fourth wave feminism, all that modern stuff that is largely complaining for the sake of complaining by bitter, insecure women who hate themselves and everyone who disagrees with them. But what I haven't talked about a lot are male feminists, men on the regressive left who, for some reason, buy into an ideology that literally wants to deny them opportunities by pulling women up at the expense of men via artificial social processes. They also seem perfectly happy to exist in an environment where, at least in the case of straight white men, they are the only identity group who it is socially acceptable to denigrate on the basis of race and gender. Now, why men would ever side with this kind of movement has always puzzled me. I mean, sure, some of the more well-intentioned ones have been brainwashed into thinking feminism is still just about promoting gender equality and that, as the alleged oppressors, they deserve all the pack criticism that they get. To those men, I send my deepest sympathies. However, there is a contingent of male feminists who, from my experience, is the largest contingent, who latch onto the feminist movement for a far more insidious reason. Now, we've all seen commentators make fun of male feminists for their apparently eager subservience to women, and that's very easy to do, especially when we see tweets like this. <laughs> That last tweet had nothing to do with feminism, but I just thought you should see it. <laughs> However, these puppy dog-esque affirmations are often symptomatic of a darker complex. A male feminist is a usually heterosexual man who claims to support women, but by support I mean constantly telling them how oppressed they are by men, and how insecure they should feel walking down the street because of how predatory men can be, and what an unfair place the world is for women, and don't worry because I'm not like other men, I'm an ally and I'll stand with you against the big bad patriarchy. <laughs> In other words, these are men who like subjugating women and enjoy making them feel bad about themselves. And in feminism, they have found the perfect way to do that without being called a misogynist, even though they are the true internalized misogynist, so to speak. With this behavior, the male feminist can make already insecure women feel even more insecure, thus exercising a sort of power play over them, with the eventual goal being to, well, you know. <laughs> On top of this, considering female feminists' vast hypocrisy when it comes to conservative women, the male feminist also has license to externally exercise his misogyny by calling conservative women all of the most disgustingly quintessentially sexist things you can possibly imagine. Since lady feminists believe in their infinite idiocy that women who disagree with them are capitulating to the patriarchy and thus enabling the alleged systems of power that oppress women and all for the sake of obtaining male attention, they are happy to admit that conservative women lose their intersectional woman card. Therefore, as apparent traitors to their gender, female feminists think it's perfectly fine to harass and disparage conservative women using all the gendered sexist insults they would decry as misogyny if directed at one of their own. This is perfect for the male feminist because he can indulge his internal hatred of women by pouring it into sexist trolling of right-wing ladies and be congratulated for it by feminist women. When you put it like that, it's very easy to see why these types of men are attracted to feminism. After all, modern feminists have strayed from the female empowerment mantra of second wave feminists in favor of 1850s couch-fainting victim feminism. Rather than seeing women as every bit as capable as men of exacting their autonomy, modern feminists see women as fragile beings who need to be catered for by men, lest they intimidate or offend women with a potential microaggression. As such, modern feminists infantilize women, encouraging their insecurities rather than toughing them up. Of course, predatorial, quietly misogynistic men would be attracted to the feminist movement. This true internalized misogyny of leftist male feminists regrettably extends beyond the punient hallways of Twitter into the real world. 
Amidst the flurry of anecdotes about sexual assault that cascaded through the public realm on October 15, 2017, which was the inauguration of the Me Too movement, it seemed most of the highest profile allegations were against powerful men of the left, many of which claimed to be feminists. Harvey Weinstein was the most obvious example. A lifelong donor to the Democratic Party who attended the 2017 Women's March in Park City, Utah, he was accused of the most horrific sexual harassment and assault of women over a period of several decades. He had used his huge amount of power to corner young women into granting him particular favors which were often very much non-consensual. Louis C.K. was the next, a comedian who has, on occasion, infused seemingly feminist rhetoric into his routines. He was accused of sexual misconduct by five women and eventually admitted to the claims. Not to mention Joss Whedon, who, while not accused of sexual misconduct, routinely cheated on his ex-wife Kay Cole during their marriage while singing the praises of feminism and writing feminist-themed scripts. In fact, Cole said she felt he used her as a shield so that he could continue with his bad behavior, with nobody criticizing his relationships with women or scrutinizing his writing as anything other than feminist. So how did he eventually excuse this bad behavior to Kay Cole? Well, in a letter he wrote to her when their marriage was falling apart, he said, in many ways, I was the height of normal in this culture. We're taught to be providers and companions and at the same time to conquer and acquire, specifically sexually, and I was pulling off both. Oh, how convenient. It's society that's the problem, not you. How very left wing. Then, on October 17, two days after Me Too went viral, there was an allegation made anonymously on Facebook about Sam Chris, contributed to the heavily left-leaning Vice magazine. Chris, a rabid socialist who tweeted that Chairman Mao was a big softy who had gone easy on his victims, posited himself as a hero of the left and an advocate for women. However, the anonymous allegation painted him in a very different light. The woman alleged he had groped her while on their third date, forcibly touched her, twisted her head to make her kiss him in a crowded theatre, and tried to force her to drink alcohol even though she insisted that she didn't want to. Sam Chris apologised for his behaviour and, while he admitted to it, he attempted to put some context around the issue, insisting that they had had a prior sexual relationship so that was okay. The author also alleged he tried to get her to go home with him by leveraging his parents' big fancy house. When I returned, I sat away from him. Then the various manoeuvres to get me to go home with him began. I want to relay precisely how he first suggested this because it demonstrates a willingness to lord wealth and thus power. Sam said, So do you want to come back to mine to see my massive house? Don't you mean your parents' massive house? Yeah, but when they die, I'll inherit it. Some socialist, am I right? <laughs> The list goes on. On October 19th, it was revealed that Rupert Myers, GQ magazine's political correspondent, had his freelance contract with the publication terminated after allegations of historical sexual misconduct from a number of women. Around the same time, Andy Signor, creator of Screen Junkies and the Honest Trailers series, who owned the suggestions that his show had a feminist agenda, and asked his Twitter feed in April 2017 to defend a female contributor from, and I quote, the hell pit that is our YouTube comments, was fired by Defy Media for egregious and intolerable sexual behavior. Former intern Emma Bauer, who had worked for Signor in 2015, alleged that he messaged her to tell her how hot she was and that he wanted to come to her hotel room to behave inappropriately toward her while she had less than a normal amount of clothing on, to use YouTube-friendly terminology, I hope. Now, considering these allegations, it's no wonder Defy Media gave Andy Signor the flick. But interestingly enough, Defy Media had been aware of the allegations against Signor for months, but waited until Weinstein was ousted before they took any action. Their statement read, In August, Defy's HR team was made aware of allegations made against Andy, at which time an investigation was launched. On Friday, new information became available and the scope and magnitude of his inappropriate actions became apparent. We're acting swiftly to address the concerns of the people affected and that going forward our community is free of harassment or discrimination of any kind. Is it too much to speculate that Defy Media, a company that promotes heavily left-leaning contributors, would still be protecting Signor if the whistle hadn't been blown on Weinstein? Who really knows? 
Fast forward to 2018 to possibly the world's most famous male feminist, Canada's very own baby-faced golden boy of the so-called progressive movement, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau. Trudeau is a self-proclaimed feminist. He is known for his alleged advocacy of women's rights, doe-eyed earnestness in his vehement insistence on respect for women, and stoic support of the hashtag MeToo movement. He also posits such woke phrases as Poverty is sexist. He even invented a new word. Maternal love is the love that's going to change the future of mankind. So we'd like you to look uh, we, we like to say people kind, not necessarily mankind, because uh, yeah. it's more inclusive. There we go, exactly. <laughs> people kind. Holy mother forking shirt balls. Considering all this avid male feministing, well it really stands to reason that in June 2018 it came to light that Trudeau had, in fact, groped a young reporter, Rose Knight, at a music festival in Creston, British Columbia in the year 2000. Adding insult to injury, while Trudeau apparently apologised for the incident the next day, he capped it off with, If I had known you were reporting for a national paper, I never would have been so forward. When the allegations came out, the world was waiting for Justin Peoplekind Trudeau's response. Would he issue a pleading mayor culpa? Would he resign? After all, he did suspend two MPs for harassment allegations in 2014. Surely he would put his money where his mouth was. I mean, not to do so would be the gravest hypocrisy, one would have thought. Well, as it turns out, Trudeau's response was simply, Part of this awakening we're having as a society, a long-awaited realization, is that it's not just one side of the story that matters, that the same interactions could be experienced very differently from one person to the next, and I am not going to speak for the woman in question. I do not feel that I acted inappropriately in any way, but I respect the fact that someone else might have experienced that differently, and this is part of the reflections that we have to go through. Now, I betcha Louis C.K., Sam Chris, Andy Senor, not to mention the two MPs that Trudeau suspended, also felt that the same interactions could be experienced differently from one person to the next, and yet they were still cancelled, so to speak. Justin Trudeau, on the other hand, was very quickly forgiven by his supporters and the whole incident was brushed under the rug. Which is ironic since the attitude of, but I experienced differently to her, is one of the things that the Me Too movement was allegedly fighting against. But I guess when it comes to its darlings, especially Justin Trudeau, the progressive movement is very, very tolerant of bad behaviour, groping, blackface or otherwise. Are you beginning to see a pattern here? It's always those who protest the loudest who are guilty of the most heinous sins. That's true of the regressive left generally. The most virulent anti-racists are more often than not afflicted with the bigotry of low expectations and hold people of colour to lower standards of behaviour than they do white people. The most outspoken, heterosexual, pro-gay advocates are insistent on defining gay people by their sexuality, which used to be a tool of homophobia that early proponents of gay acceptance were fighting against. It's called projection, and it is rampant among the modern leftist movement. So if you are a man who's concerned about women's equality in the West, please don't be. We're really fine. Yes, there may be a few societal kinks still to iron out, but by and large, we really do have it good nowadays. So don't ever, ever fall into the trap of calling yourself a male feminist. Trust me, it doesn't mean what you think it means. If you liked that video, please remember to like, subscribe, share, leave me a comment, and if you really, really liked it, then check out the video description for my subscribe star link and other ways you can support me.